We are truly going to um, implement a design thinking workshop and practice that and the creation of some new things. How do we think, take things from ideas to actually uh, implementable solutions? Um, and so that is important for the work of IFE. But hopefully, for many of you as leaders in your own careers, um, it'll be important for you as a skill set that you can refine and take back into your work. Because as the article indicated, design thinking has evolved to being more than just about product development, but it's also about just modern leadership. So as a quick show of hands, how many folks here have participated in a design thinking workshop, have used it in your careers, et cetera? Raise them high. Awesome, awesome. And, and, and also, how many have actually led such sessions? Excellent, 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 good. So we got great expertise in the room that we're gonna be able to leverage. Before we do that though, let's do a quick recap. So yesterday, we had an amazing day. I think it, I think it was a magical day of um, great ideas shared, great, um, thoughts, great work, great results that folks are, are experiencing, shared. And we also had some great challenges issued, I think. Um, I think one of the most beautiful things about this gathering, so on the surface, people will look at that photo that we just took, which by the way, I got an early copy of, it's, it's amazing. Um, that's how we do that. Yeah, really easy, really easy. Um, people will look at that photo and say, oh wow, you know, that's, uh, a well-dressed group of good-looking black people um, uh, with nice linen on. <laughs> Some will conclude that. Um, and they would be right. <laughs> but that's only if you look at the surface, right? If you look deeper than that, you will find, um, I think that photo to me, as I was joking with others, is, is symbolic of, uh, or, or is just like that Great Day in Harlem photo with all those jazz musicians. We've got some amazing leaders in the world of education um, who come at this work with a shared heart and a shared mission from different lanes. And that is how it should be, right? So we've got researchers, we've got entrepreneurs, we've got entrepreneurs who are doing tech stuff, we've got entrepreneurs who are doing uh, other forms of entrepreneurship and innovation. We've got um, practitioners, we've got folks who are leading big school systems, medium, small school systems, et cetera. We've got folks from higher ed, all that good stuff. And we all represent different parts of this ecosystem. We came together a year ago, established a mission, took that mission and created these two objectives. To advance that mission and objectives, we pursued a couple of key initiatives that came out of the session just like this one. So initiative number one was the annual summit, you're here. Our goals back then were we wanted people like you to come and connect, we wanted to learn, and we wanted to foster not collaboration, not just on-site collaboration, but hopefully, as I shared in the story of Amira, and I've seen others connecting with people saying, hey, I gotta go, I gotta go to your district, I gotta do this, I got something for you. We wanna foster that collaboration when you leave this place, too. Initiative number two was the awards. We're gonna end with that, right? We're gonna recognize folks at different stages and of career and, and, and recognize them for using innovation to move the needle for learners. And then we ended yesterday with the findings with the group that shared some of the, as Josh mentioned, just getting started, some of the initial findings, initial research that IFE has uh, begun doing, um, looking at what is working policies, practices, programs in a single district that has embraced this mantle of innovation and equity? Thank you, Michael Connor, for your leadership in your district and for taking on that charge. And the great work of Lydia and Julie uh, getting that teacher voice. Teachers um, are the central, 
I would argue, are, are a, a central user group in this work we, we like to do um, in education, right? A lot of good ideas, a lot of fancy innovations, a lot of shiny objects die at the classroom door because teachers don't use them, right? So getting that teacher voice is critical to the work. And then we, we have our, our uh, fellows. Leaders who come from, again, a cross-section, across the ecosystem, who we have made a commitment, and Jeff and Margo have made us swear in blood <laughs> via email <laughs> that we will <laughs> commit to helping these people accelerate their careers and um, have them make the kind of change that we all want to see. Um, and so we're committed to that. And so if you think about the mission, think about the objectives, this really represents IFE V1.0. This is what we've been doing over the, the year, right? What we want to do at this point is have you go from being participants in a summit slash conference, whatever you want to call it, to becoming makers. Um, we want to become makers of something new. What is the thing we want you to make? Anybody want to guess? Innovation. Innovation. Design challenge. Anybody else want to guess? What's our design challenge? Say it loud. Boom. IFE 2.0. That's our design challenge. Y'all ready? OK. All right. So we're, we're going to, that's what we're going to do. That's what you're in your teams for. That's what you're going to do. We're going to ask you to help us take this thing to a higher. Uh, Y'all see how that works? You see how that works? You see that? See that? <laughs> we, you know, you see how that works? <laughs> so yes, design challenge is IFE 2.0. Everything you learn, everything you're exposed to, everything that you bring, we want that to manifest in solutions, new initiatives, continuations, extensions of things we're doing now, IFE 2.0. So this, for my brilliant researchers, this is where we want y'all to step out of the world of theory into the world that many of us live in, yeah. right? of creating solutions in the real world. And for, my, and for my implementers and for my practitioners, we want you to do that grounded in sound research, right? Again, we need each other. All right, so the methodology, many of you have been exposed to this. You've done design thinking before. You've done workshops. There are a million and one frameworks for this. As all good design begins, we start with the problem, or in this case, the problems we want to try and solve, right? So the way that we keep ourselves focused on the problem and avoid going too soon into solution space is we frame our ideas in questions about, I wonder how, how might we? So instead of saying, oh, great, I got a good solution. I got this app that's going to do this, this, and this, you would say, I wonder how we might create a way for friends and families to share photos with each other instantly. Right? By the way, this is the process that was used to develop Instagram. Right? And many of the other innovations that <clears throat> we have come to use in our daily lives. So a couple of key ideas. Again, you have the reading there in your folders from, from our design thinking article. Um, is, and and you, this talks a lot about corporations because it was published in Harvard uh, Business Review, but you can substitute the word organization for any kind of organization or any corporation for any kind of organization. But the idea is that with the growing complexity in the modern world, with the growing proliferation of technical and technological tools, which permeates everything and every every sector, we need more simplified, more human-based solutions 
right? We, people need ways to more easily navigate all of this proliferation of technology, all this connectedness, and all of this inherent complexity. And the way to do that is to inject and create a process uh, using design thinkings and really in everything that we do. So think of it as in how you design process, how you design your, your, you know, it's not just about building products anymore, it's about how you design the work that you do on your daily basis, how you manage your teams, how you run your meetings, et cetera. So when Sean was reading that quote yesterday, I was smiling because we were gonna highlight it too. At its core, this is about simplifying and humanizing the experience of our users. This is a key idea that we need to keep central to this activity that we're about to engage in. Let me just introduce this. So this is the basic framework we're gonna use. This is a preview of the methodology. So we're first gonna use how might we challenges and this process of seeking extremes to kind of open up problem spaces that we wanna identify. We'll explain more about what that is in a second. But how might we challenge is seeking extremes. Then we're gonna, that's gonna lead us to a place where we begin creating lots of options. Create lots of options for ways that we could address those how might, how might we challenges. Crazy stuff, off the wall stuff, things that are just, you know, think brainstorming on steroids, right? Wild, crazy. And then we're gonna engage in a process of selecting down those ideas. And then we're going to start turning those ideas into prototypes. Um, in this case, prototypes will be you know, drawings, it'll be outlines, et cetera. We're going to build prototypes. We're going to engage in some rapid prototyping. And then we're going to give each other feedback on those prototypes. So this is the idea of inserting the voice of users. Ideally, in a traditional design process and the way we do it, we, would a we actually bring these users and bring these prototypes to them in varying forms and get them to respond to them. To, in order to do what this process is called is human-centered design, right? And you have to have humans at the center of it to truly honor it. We're gonna be proxies for our users in, in, this, in this process, right? So human-centered design. So this is a little bit of what it looked like last year when we were engaging in some of this design process um, together. This is the time of the day. If you want to go out on the deck with your group, if you want to grab a, a, a pad, some markers, wherever you want to go, this is the time to do it. Right? There will be plenty of space to do that. This is going to be probably the hardest part for this group. This is the part where we want you to stay out of solution mode. Stay away from solutions. We want you to fall in love with the problem. Why, Sky? Because we don't necessarily have the solution by ourselves. We need to, these problems are systems based, they're intersectional, and so we really, really. Yep. Anybody else want to know why we want to fall in love with the problem? Anybody want to offer? Yes, ma'am. If we do a really good job at defining the problem, then it allows other people to do a better job at helping us solve the problem. Exactly. Exactly. Both, they're both absolutely right. The brilliance is in defining the problem. And there are many problems to solve. So we get to choose some. So how do you, and, and again, Benita's gonna walk you through an exercise in a second, but I just, I just wanna introduce a key idea. So one of the key ways that you can begin to identify problems that you wanna solve is counterintuitively begin on the extremes. Begin by thinking of users on polar extremes, right? So think of, and I'm gonna, you know, these are popular culture uh, references. <laughs> y'all remember Eddie Murphy's character from uh, Trading Places? And y'all remember Hillary Banks, right? Right, so in the context of black folks, you got like my man who's, you know, out in this world by himself, he's a hustler, he's, he's, he's innovative, he's a thinker, all that kind of stuff, but he's also alone and he's trying to make it a way out of no way, right? 
And then Hillary, right? Well, who's Hillary? Describe her. She's got everything. She got Uncle Phil, man. She got Uncle Phil. <laughs> yeah, Bel Air, pampered, etc. The idea of focusing on the extremes and, and users that are in the extremes by trying to understand their reality, you are then able to better understand problems that you may want to solve. The classic example of this in product development that's often used is uh, Dove. Um, they, when they were researching problems to be solved, one of the things that they did is, what's the guy's name? Uh, Reptile Man. Anybody seen Reptile Man? You can Google him. Yeah. Is it Procter and Gamble? Don't they own Dove? Oh, make, it Dove. make it Dove for now. Procter and Gamble. All right. All right. All right. Reptile Man. So he's a guy who, like, implanted all of these different devices and made himself look like a human reptile. Right? So he put, like, horns in his head and, like, you know, put, like, he was the definition of an extreme user. In their case, what they, what they wanted to do was talk to him to see what his skincare regimen was, right? Because he had extreme use cases that allowed them then to understand by understanding his skincare regimen or his needs for skincare, he was able, they were able to come up with some new products that would serve broader landscape of, of users, right? So think, what can trying to solve Hillary's needs do to benefit black learners writ large, right? As an example, you guys will come up with and you can focus on other extreme users, but the idea is the extremes allow you to open the problem space, right? We do want to open that problem space, but we want to operate with a couple of design constraints. So for this exercise, our design constraints are your user must be within the IFE population. So IFE population, think students, pre-K through career. You, I could say learners, probably should say learners. Pre-K through career. Educators, trainers, teachers, et cetera. Pre-K through career. And leaders in that space. So those are the different user groups from which you can pull. Question, Earl? So think leaders that operate in service of this space. Does that make sense? So it could be everyone from liberal arts college president to superintendent, in, right? 